allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The um, first item we have on the agenda tonight is the adoption of the agenda. Tom? I shall move to adopt the agenda. Second. Second. Been moved and seconded to adopt the agenda. Uh, there, are there any corrections or additions to the agenda anybody wishes to make? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carried. Next, we have the approval of uh, previous council minutes. Move to approve the minutes of November 12th and November 19th. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the minutes of November 12th and November 19th. Uh, are there any additions or corrections to, to those minutes? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next, we have authorization to pay bills. Mr. Morak. Thank you, Your Honor. Move we pay bills in the amount of $1,235,780.07. Large chunk of that 755000 was for the wastewater treatment plant. Is there a second? Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to pay bills in the amount of one million two hundred thirty-five thousand seven hundred eighty dollars and seven cents. Are there any questions on any of the bills? If not, please cast your ballots. <clears throat> All voting yes. Motion carried unanimously. Okay, being about 7.03, I'm going to open the public hearing. This is a change in our charter ordinance to make the city attorney an appointed position. This would take an effect in two years? Yes, I believe, yes. About two years. Okay, is there anybody that wishes to be heard on that? If not, I'll close the public hearing. Move on. Is there anybody in the audience who wishes to address the council on any issues? Yes. Would you please come on up? Um, right here. State your name, address, and. Uh, good evening, everyone. Brad Graham. I live out on 1928 Pershing Road. I'd like to address the noise and the speed issue once again on Pershing Road. It's getting very disturbing that you got semis, dump trucks, school buses, cars, trucks, loud exhaust. It's gotten to the point where it's scaring the birds, the squirrels, and the animals. I can hear dump trucks all the way from Oshkosh Street or farther coming and all the way out from the high school. There's times where we gotta have the television on 24 or 26 to hear it. It's getting very disturbing out there that we gotta have this noise all the time. It's a racetrack out there before school, after school. I was told at the end of the school year, the school board and the police department were gonna address it with the school bus drivers to do the speed limit. That's not happening. You have city vehicles. And I've been told by city employees, the speed limit's 35 out there. It's not, it's 25. So I would like a noise abatement done in the whole city to determine what the noise levels are. And I encourage anybody watching us and listening to start calling in and making complaints about this. There's a lot of other places in London that have loud noises. The street here, for example. I go to Dave to have my lawnmower taken care of. You can't even talk because of the noise. But Pershing's been like this for years. And something needs to be done. And I'm requesting some action be taken. And let's get that speed reduced out there. Let's get the noise down. I mean, there's times when you want to get out of your driveway, you can't. I back in because my elderly father, so he doesn't have to walk that far. You got people trying to pass you. 
I mean, I got dump trucks coming up behind me wanting to pass on the right. So I'm asking something to get done out there and within this city. It's, you know, I just, it's sick and tiring that every day you got to listen to this and watch this. Okay. So I wish that you guys would do something and get something done out there. Okay, I'll tell you what. Um, I will ask our public works chairman to put it on the agenda next month. Uh, public works committee will discuss it, see what there possibly can be done about it. Um, ask the police chief um, for his input, or if you have any comment right now. That is also a heavy truck route and a county trunk highway, which you and I have discussed numerous times. And so the trucks that are out there, they don't have illegal exhaust. And we've also run some speed studies out there to take a look at the average speed of vehicles. And we've run extra enforcement. This last summer, too, for almost probably three to four months, we had a speed trailer out there also to help with that. We do continue to do enforcement, but we can't be out there 24 hours a day. And we've, we've talked about this, Brad, probably you and I four or five times. But as far as the loud noise of the trucks, and sometimes, and we've went out there and monitored them, the louder the vehicle and the bigger the vehicle as they travel down the road appear to be going faster than what they actually are. So it, we take all this stuff into consideration. We're always running you know, traffic enforcement out there. I guarantee you see squads going past on Pershing quite often. It's just that we've got numerous roads throughout the city that we can't be there all the time. But as I just talked to Mr. Zog about a, a week and a half ago, that we will run extra enforcement out there and stuff, because we usually do. <coughs> A lot of times it only lasts for so long. But most of the traffic that we found were between the speed limits of the upper 20s and low 30s. And we can do another study if uh, the mayor would like us to to kind of see where they're at. But that's been kind of constant throughout the last few years when we've done this. But I think I've been meeting with your, you and your dad for probably the last 10 years. Yep. So, and we go out there, we've done extra enforcement, but Pershing's just a main artery into our city and we're gonna constantly have truck road through there because it is a heavy truck road that's how vehicles get into our city but thing is when i'm coming when i'm going home well I got this my... brad I'm, I'm gonna cut you off this is something that needs to be discussed at committee level not at council level because there's no action we can take on it anyway and it needs to be discussed at public works meeting i think we can sure. hand handle it there can you let me know uh, when the meeting is done so I... it's the first tuesday of the month or excuse I'm me Monday. first monday of the month at 4.30 in the afternoon. Okay. Right here. I'd like to be there because I gotta say, something's gotta get done. Yeah, well the fact also is it's County Trunk Road and there's not a lot we can do to change county regulations either. So it's a joint road, it's a city street, but it's also County Trunk Road. So the thing is the speed yeah. limit is 25 from the high school. Yep. And these guys are just- We're, we're well aware of that. So like okay. I say, when I'm doing 25, I got dump trucks crawling up on me yeah so, like i said this is to be com addressed right. at committee level okay like i said i'd like to get this taken care of once and for all so okay thank you. thank you is there anybody else that would like to address council okay uh moving on to standing in special committees first of all board of public works mr barrington <coughs> board of public works met on monday december 2nd at 4 30. <coughs> motion made and seconded to adopt agenda motion carried unanimous uh, wastewater treatment plant facility update where no questions are concerned we went over the amount of phosphates and all the other things coming in they were in the normal range the next item we discussed using salt brine for anti-icing needs the committee discussed the use of salt brine for anti-icing needs pre-wetting of salt and pre-treatment of the roads before the snow falls. Mr. Hearth explained that he and staff are researching the costs and anticipate, anticipated benefits for brine applications. No motion was made at this time. The next was a discussion for applying to multimodal local supplementary program. The MLS program is a one-time $75 million transportation grant announced by Governor Evers. This grant is advertised as 90-10 split and applications are coming due in September of 2019. 
Chad explained that the city will apply for a grant for reconstruction of Oshkosh Street from Wolf River Avenue to Pershing Road. It is anticipated that the award process will be very competitive and, and the application asks if the applicant is willing to accept a local grant amount, I think there should be a lower grant amount for funding. The committee agreed that it will make the application more attractive, however, to define in a narrative how low of a grant we can accept before the local match becomes too high for the city to afford at this time. If the city is offered an MLS award in the future, the board will determine at that time if they will accept the grant. No motion on this. The next was addition of a stump grinder attachment to the capital equipment 2020 schedule. Due to the process to identify FEMA eligible funding from the July storm, staff was informed that stump grinding is generally not applicable for any type of FEMA reimbursement and the city is responsible for all stump grinding costs. There is an estimated 365 stumps that need grinding in the park and along the city streets which would cost upwards of $11,000. This leads to the question if it would be beneficial to purchase a stump grinding attachment for the city's skid steer rather than contract out. Chad and staff are researching options, but initially it appears the city could purchase a grinder that would be at or near the cost of, at or less the cost of 11,000. Chad pointed out that the city's current skid skid steer is old and on schedule for replacement next year which a more powerful one would be beneficial when replacement occurs to power these types of attachment motion made and seconded to add the cost of a new stump grinder attachment to the capital project capital equipment projects for the 2020 schedule motion carried by all it was nothing in the director's report, other matters not identified. Next month's agenda items would be discussion of possible adoption of ATV, UTV routes within the city of New London. And the way we're talking, we'll probably add this thing of Pershing Road next month. No further business. A motion was made and seconded to adjourn the meeting at 533. That's all I have tonight, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Barrington. Next, we move on to Finance and Personnel. Mr. Morak. Thank you, Your Honor. Finance and Personnel Committee met on Wednesday, December 4th at 4.30 p.m. in the Council Chambers. Motion was made by Barrington and seconded by O'Connell <coughs> to re recommend a Council approval of the list of elections inspectors for a two-year term, including a change from Richard Potts to Cynthia Potts. Motion carried 8-0. Mark abstained as his wife is on the list. Finance Director Judy Radke discussed the adjustment to the financial records for deposit of funds into a fraudulent account for payroll. She and Jill Moss, payroll human resource coordinator, discussed the process of reporting the incident to city officials, the police department, and the insurance company. Mrs. Ratke then worked with the auditors on the debit portion of the adjustment to the general fund as it anticipated that those payroll funds are more likely than not to be recovered. A motion was made by Fache and seconded by Barrington to post the adjustment as recommended by the auditors. Motion carried 9-0. Finance Director Ratke shared the information on the Audi County sales tax revenue sharing. The amount for the City of New London is estimated at $21,000 $368. Mrs. Ratke is in the process of understanding the legality of receiving this payment. Finance Director Judy Ratke reviewed the retirement schedule and designated funds that have been set aside for payment of those obligations. Comparing the funds set aside each year and the estimated retirement schedule, it appears that there is adequate funds being set aside each year to meet the city's future obligations. The committee will continue to review this topic on an annual basis. Finance Director Ratke reviewed the September financial reports, 
administrator reports and finance, uh, finance director's reports were discussed. There being no public comment or further business, the meeting adjourned at 5.33 p.m. The next regularly scheduled finance committee meeting will be held in the council chambers on January 8th at 4.30 p.m. <clears throat> there was also a special finance and personnel committee held on Tuesday, November 12th at 6.30 p.m. in the council chambers. Mr. Morick asked the librarian Ann Hunt what they were specifically needed from the city regarding a commitment towards the riverfront development property. Hunt stated that a commitment from the city stating that the city will apply for the WEDAA grant and will put up the $1.2 million towards the development. If the grant isn't received, then the city is not on the hook for the money. The Friends of the Library Group has already raised over $1 million. In order to continue fundraising, they need the city to be invested in this project's success. Also discussed was the floodplain, the flood fringe, and the TID district that could be created. Motion by Fache, seconded by Zog, to have the city draft a letter of commitment to, for the downtown development project to move forward. Motion carried 9-0. There will, this will be a finance and council agenda item for December meetings. There be no further public comment or further business. Mm. The meeting adjourned at 6.50 p.m. Then I would move that we adopt the ordinance to make the city attorney an appointed position. This is the second reading. Second. Been moved and seconded to adopt the ordinance, making the city attorney an appointed position. Second, second and final reading. Are there any questions or comments on that item? If not, please cast your ballots. <coughs> All voting yes. Motion carried. I move we I move we adopt. I move we approve the list of election officials for a term of. January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2021. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the list of election officials for the term of 2001, or excuse me, January 1, 2020 through December 31st, 2021. Any questions on those? Please cast your ballots. Uh, motion carried nine to one. Morak abstaining. I think his wife is on the list. Yes, she is. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, get her off it. Okay. And I move we approve the license list for November as presented. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the license list as presented. Are there any questions or concerns on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Is that it, Mr. Morak? That's, that's it. Thank okay, you. thank you. Next, we move to Park and Recreation. Mr. Besaw. Thank you, Your Honor. Park and Rec Committee met on Tuesday, December 3rd. Meeting was called to order at 432. Alderman Herder moved to approve the agenda. Second by Alderman Pinch. Motion was carried by all. Public comment relevant to items on the agenda. There was none present. Discuss and possible recommendation regarding a fee for profit clubs using the London's baseball diamonds. Chad Harth had a brief discussion involving how the department currently schedules clubs and teams for games and practices on baseball and softball diamonds. The committee also talked about local clubs and donations they have made to the city in the form of capital improvements. Chad Harth will invite the users of the ball diamonds to the January meeting to assist in further discussion on this item. No motion was made on this item. Review of the emergency slow no wake ordinance to limit how long buoys will be placed in the river in the boating season. At last month's committee meeting, a request was made to look into defining how late into the boating season slow no wake buoys would be placed in the river. After researching the topic, it was determined that the municipal code already defines this timeline as buoys shall be placed on or as near as practical to March 1st and removed by November 1st each year. No motion was made on this item. Updates regarding the creation and the adoption of the Title VI plan. Chad Hart provided a brief history of the grant that has been acquired to subsidize the purchase of the city's 
senior transit buses. This grant is filtered through the state DOT from federal and has several strings attached. One requirement for grant recipients is to have a Title VI plan adopted. <coughs> Chad Harth reviewed some of the uh, components of the Title VI plan and stated that he has contacted the high school marketing class to assist in creating some of these components. No motion was made on this item. Discussion regarding electronic ticket machines at boat launches. The committee discussed some benefits of installing electronic ticket machines at the city's boat launches. Chairman Besaw polled a few other communities with these machines and many reported increases in revenue over traditional honor system applications. Chad Harth and Besaw will report on working which system, researching which system would best fit our needs and submit a proposal for purchase at a future meeting. No motion was made on this item. Director's report and memo, there was no questions or concerns in the director's memo report. Chairman's report, none was identified. Committee members report, none were identified. Next month's agenda items, private clubs utilizing ball diamonds and updates regarding the Title VI. Motion was made, moved to adjourn. Adjourned at 5.15, motion was carried by all. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Besaw. Next, we move to Planning Commission. Mr. Steinhorst. Thank you, Your Honor. The Planning Commission met on December 5th, 2019. Uh, the agenda was amended to adopt with the change to item five, the Schultz annexation from certified survey map approval to annexation map carried 6-0. Minutes of the October 31st, 2019 Planning Commission minutes were uh, amended with a change in the vote of previous minutes to 6-0 and a spelling correction on the word plat. That also carried 6-0. The proposed annexation map for the Schultz annexation was discussed. It was moved and seconded to recommend approval of the Schultz annexation map to the council, carried 6-0. Certified survey map approval of the Riley property, property for Brad and Renee Riley property combining two adjacent lots into one lot was discussed, was moved and seconded to approve the certified survey map as presented, also carried 6-0. Regarding the KISS Bottling Company zoning, the committee discussed the issue of KISS Bottling Company zoning uh, along with a recommendation from the building inspector that offered two options for dealing with the problem. Motion was made and seconded to accept the recommendation of the building inspector and recommend to council to amend ordinance 17.11-5 subsection 2 to allow retail stores as part of a manufacturing operation under the M, that is manufacturing zoning, carried 6-0. Regarding Taft Park uh, serv Certified Survey Map, the proposed certified <laughs> survey map for the vacation of State Street and Taft Park and combining the Taft Park and Street vacation into one parcel was discussed. It was moved and seconded to approve the Taft Park Certified Survey Map, also carried 6-0. The committee then discussed a recommendation from City Attorney Lou Otters to revise Ordinance 1706 to take into account the new state statute Act 67 regarding conditional use permits. Motion was made and seconded to re recommend to council changes as presented. Carried 6-0. In other matters, a reminder that our December meeting will be held on January <coughs> 2nd, if necessary, due to the New Year's holiday. And our meeting adjourned at 5.35 p.m. I would have moved to approve the annexation of the Schultz property. Second. It's been moved and seconded to um, approve the annexation map for the Schultz property. Is there any question on that item? Discussion? If not, please cast your ballots. All voting yes, motion carried. And that's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Steinhorst. Next, we move to Economic Development Committee. Mr. Morak. Thank you, Your Honor. The Economic Development Committee met on Tuesday, November 26th at 4.30 p.m. in the New London City Council Chambers. The October 29th minutes were approved. 
Lynn April from CESA 8 give a presentation on the INSPIRE program. This covered an academic and career planning program available at the schools that subscribe. A company called Excel <clears throat> offers an interactive way for students to research careers and develop a plan on how to reach those career goals. Lou Leone gave an update on the Riverfront Development Project, stating it had been pushed back one year to allow for a better plan regarding the TIF district and the flood fridge management. The six acres at the riverfront and an empty lot across the library are part of this plan. The utilities and the public works are working on the infrastructure needs to get a cost on those items. By this time next year, all these things should be aligned and application for funds finished. Leone reported info from other communities in regard to how they are assisting developers in encouraging growth. The committee's goals for 2019 were discussed. There were suggestions on revisions, priorities were discussed, namely retaining current businesses and communication lines with those businesses being top priority. Also discussed were the committee's expectations for reports on a monthly and quarterly basis. April Kapitsky from the Chamber gave her business updates. Nail and Spa opened a second location at 1275 North Shano Street, offering manicures and pedicures. Super Lube is now take five oil change. Opening soon is new business, Innovative Industrial Staffing Incorporated, and also the Mark Christopher Law Office at 209 North Water Street. For future activities and speakers, we hope to speak to Becky Hunt from Wapaka Job Center and Oliver Buckless regarding Advancing AI Wisconsin. Under public comment, Scott Black spoke about the great conversation regarding the INSPIRE program. Terry Wagner recommended having Oliver Boos speak about the AI program. He also spoke about the city working in collaboration with other cities to fill resource needs, citing shared revenue services help all. And the meeting adjourned at 5.32 p.m. There, you also have in your packet a report from Opaka County Economic Development Corporation. And that's all I have for economic development, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. You also have uh, minutes from the li minutes and reports from Library Museum, Police and Fire Commission, Utility Commission, Cemetery Superintendent. Are there any questions or comments on any of those? Okay, if not, we'll move along to reports of officers. Um, I guess I'm up first. Um, I am going to make the appointment of Mike Pinch to the Cemetery Commission. And also want to th big thank you to the chamber and all the people that participated and helped in the uh, holiday celebration last Friday. Very nice, very successful, um, really neat thing for the community. And also to everybody out there, have a very Merry Christmas. Our administrator, Lou. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I didn't, you have my report. There's just a couple of things I want to point out. Uh, I wanted to say uh, good job to uh, Ginger, uh, Michelle, and Jane for the Parks and Rec uh, ra uh, reindeer run. Um, there were several people that ran. I, myself, and my family ran, and it was quite cold. But uh, they kept uh, cheering everybody on uh, to complete it. So uh, thank you for putting on a, a good reindeer run. Uh, met with Representative Kevin Peterson over several issues. Uh, we spent a good about hour and a half uh, talking about it and he took some notes and took it back to Madison and um, Maple Creek I assisted Maple Creek in filing their multimodal application although we're helping Maple Creek do it what, what it is is if they get that grant uh, there's a portion that the city would actually have to take care of and that would help reduce that cost so it's helping them help us just be careful not have to take care of if we choose to take if care we, of it correct yeah. correct <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And that's all. Okay, thank you. Next, our utility manager, Mr. Thompson. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, our Well 4 project, or Well 8, whichever one you want to call it on Oshkosh Street, 
we were able to drill that well since the last council meeting and develop it. Uh, the crew that did that actually got up to a thousand gallons a minute production. And we will not run it at that in the future, but that's being done. Tomorrow morning, the well building itself will be arriving and be set tomorrow morning. And we'll have some concrete work to do, some piping. But hopefully by mid to end of February, that should be back in, in, into service. We're looking forward to getting that done. Friday night, we also had a service wire failure at one of the underground, one of the homes. Previously, they put some fencing in and hit it with a shovel, and it looks like it had failed. So we'll be dealing, we got a temporary to take care of that. There's a pre-con meeting tomorrow on Thursday to discuss the London Acre subdivision. Do a pre-con for the utilities that need to go into there. We're looking forward to doing that. I will be attending a WPPI executive committee meeting on Wednesday afternoon and a board of directors meeting on <coughs> Thursday. We did have one of our employees uh, re give us a re notice of resignation. He's going to go to college. Work he said his utility career is not what he thought it would be, and he's going to go on to college. One of the other things that we've been working on took a while to get, but we do have, now have available to all our residential <laughs> customers. It's called My Meter Account. It's now that we have all the AMI meters in, you can actually get that reset up. We had about 1,300 people, I believe, that paid online I through our pay, pay system network. Now you can reset your account up in my meter. Kick it up you'll be able to receive your utility bills electronically. You'll 44. be able to pay them electronically, and you'll be able to monitor like your, your consumption at your house. So we only have 168 there. to date, there, which started last there. on the 5th of December. So I go to looking forward to having that out there as a tool, and I hope the citizens enjoy 100. it. We continue to give our Christmas lights there away to, to the end of the year. And as a result of that, we you need three non-perishable food items to get a string of lights. You can get up to two sets of lights. Gets me down as long as we're talking about that. I do have a check for the community cupboard for $1,000. And I also have another check to the City of New London for our pilot payment for $708,251 that I will give you at the end of the meeting. So, Thank you. Those Merry are Christmas. numbers we like to hear. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. We appreciate it. Next, we have our um, Director of Public Services, Mr. Hearth. Thank you, Your Honor. Two quick things. Um, if anybody out there is looking for our, our newest winter spring program guide uh, that's just been delivered, um, the program guide is out. We delivered it to the local schools. It should be in your Thursday folders if you get that uh, with your students and your children. Um, you can also pick it up at the pool, the library, or at the office here, or download it online. So a lot of these programs will kick on after the first of the year. So uh, don't delay and, and get uh, caught up in the holidays if you're looking for these programs. Now's the time to start thinking about registering. And then secondly, on the street side, once again, we just want to remind everybody that uh, with the cold temperatures, please do not discharge your sump pumps into the street. Um, that creates a hazard because obviously that ices up. Um, we've had situations where it gets, uh, you know, several inches thick before we can find it or get to it. Um, that creates a very slippery situation. Or um, what more commonly happens is it goes down at the curb line to your neighbors and then they're dealing with the slippery situation in their driveway. And we get a lot of complaints that way. So please do not discharge in the street. And it is illegal to discharge into the sanitary sewer as well. So you're going to have to, you know, discharge it in your backyard until spring and then uh, you can bring it back out in the street. But uh, we just want to um, hit that up front so we're not creating hazardous situations in the street this year thank you thank you next we have chief police or chief of police mr schleter thank you, your honor we had three anniversaries kathy martin's 12 years lisa taylor nine years and josh wilson 18 years i uh, also just want to remind everyone again about the parking ordinance during the winter time make sure to have your vehicles off the road from 3 a.m to 6 a.m or anytime we have a snow emergency we do not want to write tickets but please just make sure that they're off so the street department gets roads clean which Seems like they've been doing a pretty good job this year. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And is there a fire chief here tonight? No, that's unusual. Okay, um, any other comments from anybody? Okay, um, next item we have is closed session. Look for motion. So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved to go into closed session for 1985 1F receive a report from Ed Reed uh, regarding allegations of harassment between staff members. Um, I'll, uh, please cast your ballots. Ten current staff asked to be invited to that. Who are involved in it? 
Pardon? And current staff who are involved in it be invited into this no. session? No. No, this is only a report to council. Correct? Yes, that's correct. All voting yes, motion carried. 